This is the lecture on writing a descriptive essay. Before we begin talking about your descriptive essay that you're going to be writing, we need to figure out what description is and what good description looks like. Um, pause this video for just a moment and I want you to jot down um, a collection of items. You can make a list. I want you to think about a person or a place that is meaningful to you. And then I want you to think about objects that you associate with the, this person or this place or this event. These can be tools or household objects, articles of clothing, litter from a party, a ball game, a dance. You're providing clues about a person or people who attended the event or about this uh, place or a, per, a specific person that you're describing. Just make a list, a short list. Um, and then I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes, and when you're ready, you can unpause the lecture. Before we talk about your list, I want to give you an example of my list. So I wrote down a collection of objects that remind me of my grandmother, Jo. She's a very important person to me. Now, you don't know Jo. Um, you don't have any idea um, who my grandmother is or what the experience that I have with her um, is. However, my job is to give you a list of items, uh, if I were describing her, that would most clearly help represent who she is and what she means to me. So, some of these objects that remind me of my grandmother are the switch she always kept in the back seat of the car that she would... Um, turn around and uh, th thrash our legs while we were driving down the road if we were being my sister and I were being too rowdy she has a drawer in her house that's full of sewing goods she loved to sew um, when we were younger she made all of our clothes and they were like little matchy matchy um, sister outfits but she has a drawer of sewing goods that I've always um, loved uh, I always loved when I was a kid it always fascinated me all her thimbles um, and thread and buttons that she had in every color. Um, she um, started labeling things on in her house. She would put these little, she would get us to buy her little white tags that she would place on the bottom of things uh, because her memory started going bad several years ago um, and she was afraid that she wouldn't be able to remember where they came from and and when they came from what how old they were so she started labeling these objects in her home um, her favorite cookbook with handwritten notes it's a, a yellow calling all cooks book that was created in 1982, which was the same year that I was born, um, and it's absolutely filled with um, these handwritten notes where she's adjusted recipes over the years, and this antique armoire uh, that's in her bedroom where she keeps all of her clothes. Um, I used to hide in there and pretend I was a uh, and the line, the witch in the wardrobe, um, but it is all, it's been, always been a special um, object um, in her home for me. So that's my list. And hopefully, now that you kind of understand what I'm asking for, you can start retooling your list, your journal, um, for things that mean. I could have chosen a million other things um, that remind me of my grandmother, but to me, these six are, I'm sorry, these five objects um, are are very critical uh, in my memory that are connected to my grandmother, Jo. So let's go on from there. We're going to come back. So we're going to just stick a pen in our journal for just a moment, and we're going to come back to it um, a little bit later. So kind of set that to the side. This lecture is found in um, under the descriptive essay uh, module. It's the first link there on the description um, lecture. So if you wanted to follow along while we were kind of talking about it. So when you describe something... Um, you are trying to produce um, something in the mind of 
uh, the reader uh, that connects them with the object. Again, you've never met my grandmother Jo, so in order to describe her fully for you, I would have to use such a spe specific detail that you perhaps could um, uh, visualize her in your mind when I'm done with it. Description without meaning is just a list. Um, it, description good description is about things that mean we'll talk about that a good bit during the semester um description makes a judgment about things that are being described and gives it that so what quality kind of revisiting our so what in the seven um, common moves um, lecture from earlier without this quality description is just a list and list are boring so I wrote this description and I put that in air quotes of my childhood bedroom when you enter my bedroom you will find a desk just to the left of the door Beyond the desk on the left side of the room is my bed. On the far wall, there's a window. Yada, yada, yada. You see, you get my drift. This is just a list. It has no meaning. Um, you are picturing, this is like something that you would write for maybe a third or fourth grade a writing assignment when your teacher asks you to describe your favorite room and you don't have the tools in your arsenal and your writer's toolbox to really fluff out um, the objects in your room to turn it into from a list into something that actually means something. It lacks a so what factor. Your thought process is why am I reading this? This is boring. Anything, even that bedroom, can be interesting as long as the writer has an agenda, an original take on the subject, an interpretation that makes the subject worth paying attention to. It has to mean. A successful description of the bedroom could include shape and size and furnishings, um, but you're looking for more of unique details. Um, the history, um, the memories that are associated with that place, that gives a unique so what factor. It conveys meaning to people who've never seen them before. So retooling that description you see this example. I've always liked the way the afternoon light slants into my bedroom from the bay window in the hallway. It casts a warm sepia glow across the wood floor, illuminating the marring of years of abuse. Every scratch its own memory. The roller skating craze of 89, trying to learn how to dance in heels before the homecoming dance of 94. The floor is cluttered with inanimate things, each with its own story to tell Oh, the secrets these four walls keep. I've moved beyond that initial list describing a spatial uh, flow of my bedroom from the door uh, through the different objects. And now I've suddenly connected meaning to these inanimate, tangible objects that are in my room, particularly the floor um, the scratches in the floor becoming a memory. And now you're more likely to continue reading to see, number one, if I divulge some secrets that my bedroom walls kept. Um, but it, it has more powerful meaning um, that I'm, I'm getting across to my reader. Good writers can make these ordinary things like that bedroom seem extraordinary because they find meaning and they share that meaning with their audience. It's not the object that you find interesting. It's what that object means to me and what I make it mean to you as my reader. When you choose a topic, choose something that is meaningful to you. I can't stress that enough. You are more likely to write powerfully about things that have meaning for you and you can relate that meaning to someone, um, to your audience, to your reader. It's most powerful when it conveys a feeling or an understanding without actually naming it. I didn't tell you about the secrets that my walls 
kept, but I led you in that direction. I shared those memories with you of me learning how to dance in heels and um, how I used to roller skate and drive my mother crazy um, practicing roller skating in my bedroom on the wooden floor. You want to avoid label words like tasty, refreshing, sad, beautiful, that's that part of balancing showing and telling that I discussed in the previous lecture. Instead, show them the things in a way that make the reader perceive them as beautiful or sad or refreshing or tasty using those five senses that we talked about when we talked about description um, and style. Don't give your readers your interpretation directly. That's that whole show tell balance again. Give them things in the way that causes them to react the way that you want them to react. Use your writer's eye, that style and that attitude, your tone, carefully selecting just the right details to convey the feeling that you want your readers to share. We talked about economy, details, just to have details to fill and fluff out your page are just clutter and you wanna cull those out to strengthen your writing. Sometimes the point of your description is expressed as your thesis. The apartment was unfit for human beings to live in, followed by the details that prove that point. Sometimes you can follow an opposite agenda with the details first and then reveal the object or the person or the place at the end. Those are stylistic moves that you can do. Um, remember that you don't have to state that explicitly. In this paper, I'm going to discuss the uh, three objects that I associate most with my grandmother. You don't want to do that. You can show us. You can show us. We can read it between the lines. Don't you think this is about this? Don't you think this shows that this? You don't have to explicitly state your thesis every time. When it's successful, the reader can, when your description is successful, the reader will be able to fill in the blanks every time. Description, description can follow a sequence, a spatial sequence, um, top to bottom, inside to outside, clockwise or counterclockwise, but it doesn't have to. We talked about order of importance. We talked about um, chronological, which it technically probably wouldn't fit naturally with this um, particular um, piece uh, in all cases, um, but as long as your points are clearly stated or implied, the details can be arranged in random order as if the eye were wandering from detail to detail. Um, in good description, what's random usually isn't. Writers are going to plot that sequence of details, usually saving the best for last, that last little punch to pack in um, before the reader, to, before concluding the, um, the essay for the reader, okay? Um, I want you to um, take out the um, handout or pull up the handout on Normandy Beachhead, and I'm going to end this essay, I mean, in this um, uh, screencast um, to give you time to complete the assignment that's on the following um, the, the following page. So, I want you to read Normandy Beachhead, and I want you to take um, notes uh, on your handout, and I want you to use that mastering essay elements, that seven uh, common moves um, sheet that you, Donahoe kids, you have that, you got that at the meeting. Um, Jacksonville kids, you can take a look at it on the, um, in the module, Mastering Essay Elements. And I want you to try to figure out the moves that Powell uses in his essay. Um, it's a, an essay about Normandy Beach um, and about the hundreds of lives that were lost there um, before, uh, on the beach, i um, trying to make our, the, the Americans trying to make their way into Europe. Um, I want you to take a look. I want you to try to figure out the moves. Just go down your checklist. 
and see if you can recognize these moves because doing being able to do that when you see them will help strengthen your own writing. When you have your, li your list, advance to the next slide to check and see how many moves you were correctly able to identify and then check out my screencast on Normandy Beachhead that I'm going to be posting tomorrow. Have a good night.